just up here, let's spread out around. We'll get active. Who has some clay still? Yes, excellent. We're always at, I, I always teach actively, I guess. So. Wherever you like, there's chairs, we can pull some more up here on the ends. We're gonna pass stuff around, we're gonna look at stuff. Me standing way up here showing you stuff, that's Sorry. no fun. Get up. Yay. You want some? Sure. I taught middle school art for about 10 years, and uh, I was used to having them all around me. You never knew where the, the, the spitwad was going to come from. <laughs> they never did that. They were good kids. All right. Mold making and casting as uh, an extension of that. Why the heck do we do mold making? What's the use of it? Anybody know? Casting things. Duplication, Duplication is a big part of it. Uh, sometimes, but we can make a, uh, a mold for simply a one-shot piece as well. Depends on what you want to do, but it is a way to take something that you've sculpted in a very fragile media, like this modeling clay, and transform it into something more substantial. Plaster, resin, bronze, whatever you like. Uh, so we're going to be looking at some of those processes of mold making and casting tonight. So if you have some play, keep, uh, play, keep playing with it. We'll have some fun with that. Um, let's start off with this. Um, basically, you can make a mold out of anything that will hold a shape. So I could make a mold out of this modeling clay. If I put it around my finger here and squish it down, it has now captured my fingerprints inside there and all the details of my fingernail. And if I kind of loosen it up a little bit, pop my finger out. Now the hole is slightly bigger than my finger because I had to wiggle it around to get my finger out. But that's a duplicate of my finger in there. So if I poured some plaster in there, I've got a <coughs> copy of my finger. Now, when I was in graduate school, uh, my sculpture teacher told a story. He's a metalsmith. And a friend of his uh, had an accident. They were out logging, and there was big machinery, and he had his hand resting on the machinery and this cable on the machinery, something snapped. It was under huge pressure, and this cable, whack, ripped his glove right off. And his thumb was gone. And they rushed him to the hospital. They looked all over the ground for his thumb. They couldn't find it. At the hospital, they fixed him all up, whatnot. Well, he was part of a group of blacksmiths, and Blacksmiths tend to have some injuries every now and then. Well, eventually they went back to the site and they found the glove and his thumb was inside it. And they, they took that thumb and he made a mold of it. Out of, not out of modeling clay, but out of silicone. And he cast bronze copies of it and it became the man's name was Tom. It was Tom's Thumb Award for every single time any blacksmith did something really stupid and injured himself. He got a little bronze copy of Tom's Thumb. Uh, as he told me, I think they kept the original thumb in the back of his freezer for years. Um, oh my gosh. That's kind of gross. But you can do that. You can make a copy of just about anything with something that'll hold uh, a shape for a little bit of time. Now this obviously won't last very long. This modeling clay, if I were to cast it, I'd probably get one casting off of it. But I can make molds out of other things that'll last a lot longer and I can make duplicates as we were talking just a second ago. This is something I got at a garage sale. Actually, I went to the garage sale because they had a kiln for sale and I wanted a kiln. But the woman wouldn't sell it to me unless I bought all of her molds along with it. Okay, so I got all of her ceramic slip molds from the late 1960s. 
and a ceramic slip mold is two parts. These are lemons, and these are just plaster molds. And there's several things we want to notice about these for just basic beginning mold making thoughts. Uh, they're, these are very solid. You can't manipulate them. The way ceramics work, uh, you make the clay really, who's done some slip molds before ceramic work? Okay, you get the clay really wet and goopy, pour it in these holes, slosh it around so it coats the whole inside, and the plaster is going to suck some of that moisture right out of the clay and harden it up. And then if you're real gentle, you can open it up and you've got a hollow lemon that you can put in the kiln and fire. You can scrape it and probably get a little bit up here in this part and you can scrape that off. Um, this part is called the sprue. The part where you pour in is called a sprue. A funnel works as well, but a sprue. Notice that that takes up part of the surface of the lemon. So that little bit right there doesn't get detailed. And that's fine, you can always work on that later. Uh, touch it up after it's cast. Uh, some other things to notice. If we take a hunk of clay, and let's say, here I'll just put it down. I'm gonna make a mold of this piece of clay right there, sitting on a surface. And I'm gonna pour plaster all around it. And if I do that, there's a problem right off the bat because of how I made this clay. There are what we call undercuts. Does anybody notice those? An undercut is a problem. Let's see. Oh, my little turtle. We're going to come back to my little turtle in a little bit. If I set him down on the table here, underneath his head is a big undercut. I can just go stick my whole finger right under there. That's a problem. Because if I have my clay and I surround it with hard plaster, now I can't get that clay out. Now the clay I could probably get out if I keep working at it. Out from under where those undercuts have like grabbed hold. However, uh, if I get it out of there and now I pour in plaster, I'm never going to get that out. It doesn't flex. So, we have two part molds. So one half comes all the way up to just where it starts to curve the other way and stops. And this part comes just up till it curves the other way and so there are no undercuts. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to make a mold out of something solid, undercuts are terrible. And I have, in the past, made some molds uh, with some modeling clay and whatnot, and I scraped the modeling clay out, got it all out, and poured in my plaster, and I thought I did really good because I didn't have any undercuts, but I did have just the just slightest undercuts. Mm. Had to bust the mold apart just to get the piece out. Mm. So, undercuts aren't your friends. So if you ever want to make something, with a cheap and easy plaster mold, this is super easy and super cheap. It's also very messy to do, which is why we aren't doing it tonight. Uh, I was asked to do this last Friday, and uh, I thought, my first initial thought was, oh yeah, we're going to make some plaster molds, we're going to make some silicone rubber molds, and then I really started thinking about it. And plaster molds, that's just really, really messy and heavy. And silicone rubber molds, which is that blue stuff, we'll get that we'll talk about that later. That takes at least an hour to start setting up and it's a lot of prep work and so we'll just pretend tonight. So two part molds or more. You can make as many parts to your mold as you need to ensure there are no undercuts. But of course the more parts you get the more complicated it gets and the more difficult it is. Uh, so, that was a store-bought one. This is one I made, oh, years ago. It's just horrible. Look at this thing falling apart. And I did, uh, I took some milkweed pods. You know those old milkweed pods? Yeah. Grow on those vines. I was making copies of them. Uh, 
out of wax. So I made, I poured in wax copies and then I could get, and I took the wax out, and then I sculpted with the wax. Uh, and wax can be used for bronze casting. Uh, you put it in another mold, and have you heard of the lost wax process? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, so you take your wax sculpture, you put it in another mold called a waste mold this time. It is meant to be destroyed. So you put your plaster in there, or your sculpture, put plaster all around it, heat it up in a kiln till all the wax melts out. And so inside you've got a hole, the shape of your sculpture. Flip it over, pour molten bronze in before that mold cools down. Break off the mold and now you've got a bronze copy. So yes, I was making bronze milkweed pods. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what I was doing. Not my best, most interesting pieces in the world, but uh, I think they're on my website or somewhere online. You can see them there. I make human figures almost out of everything natural if I can. Some other things to notice. Notice this piece has little dents. This piece has little bumps. Yes, oh, dents yeah, and bumps. And those are registration marks is what we call those so that you can be assured that when you put it together, this inside edge and that inside edge line up perfectly. Because if, if those registration marks weren't there, uh, I'm trying to see in there and make sure I line them up, that didn't work. Just a little registration, a bump and a hole, and that's all you need. And they're incredibly easy to make. Here's how we do it. You'll notice mine isn't so pretty on the outside like this one. Here's how I did mine. I took a box, a regular old cardboard box, and a plastic bag, and just put the plastic bag in it like I was lining a trash can, <coughs> and poured in, uh, let's see which side I, did. I poured in some plaster, just about that much, and then carefully squished in, while the plaster was still wet, squished in the uh, milkweed pods before it dried, and at the same time, I poked my finger in there into the plaster and just made some dents. And I tried to be very careful not to let those get up more than halfway. And I didn't do so well on this one. It got more around and I got undercuts and that is why this is broken here. And I glued it back together. So, uh, and then once that sets up, now I'm gonna pour in more plaster on top of it with the milkweed pod still stuck in there. But, that plaster is going to stick to itself really good. So what we need is a release agent, something to be kind of slippery in there and make it let go when we're done. So there's all kinds of things you can use as release agents. You can buy really expensive ones at, uh, at stores. Uh, soft soap works pretty well, uh, just some liquid soap. Or Vaseline. I use lots of Vaseline when I'm doing mold making. I just take a brush and just brush on a real thin layer and out it comes. And, and so, so the bottom part is, is cured before you put the release agent in. Yes, once it, it has to set. Okay. Uh, I don't bother waiting till it dries, but it, after it sets, then I can. And it kind of goes through a few stages of setting. Plaster does. It kind of gets hard, but you can still, that's when I poked the holes in so that they'd stay. Um, Do you get shrinkage when you want to dry? With plaster, no. Okay. With some other materials, yes, yeah. but I don't tend to use those for molding. So, let that set, excellent question. Let it set a little bit longer so it's hard, but it doesn't have to completely dry out. Just make sure it's kind of hard. Coat it with some release agent, and then you pour in more plaster, and now those dents, will become bumps on this piece. <laughs> and you've got your registration marks. And I also, when I did it, I tried to make sure that the milkweed pods were right up against the edge so that I had some sprue holes. Now this is this has been just breaking apart because I made, we were talking about how long molds will last. I think I made like 40 of these. Really? And, yeah. and this yeah. was, this was not a well-made mold. This is one of the first ones, and it, it has suffered a lot of damage, and that's fine. You know, that's what you suffered detail deterioration. Of the detail. A little bit, like that little edge of the pod right, there, right, that kind of degraded. Right. That's what I was 
dealing with it. But you can always kind of back it, depending on what you're casting it with, you can go back in and cut the details right. back in if you like, and I do that a lot. Uh, I'll, most most I'll have the over, you can help. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do with that many milkweed pots? Did you put it in a depth of sculpture? Or did I did. I, I took, and notice I had various sizes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I sculpted with them, I pretended they were different parts of the human anatomy. Mm -hmm. So they were thighs and arms and stomach and all sorts yeah. of things. Um, I, I made two sculptures. Um, they're, they're, that was enough. They weren't my best work. So <laughs> those were a, a fun experiment. I experiment with things all the time, and this is another one we'll get to in a little bit. So plaster molds, very simple. Uh, cheap, easy, whatever. And then, oh, this was nice. I just lifted the plastic bag out of the cardboard box and took it off, and I was done with this. Uh, it's not as pretty as the store-bought one, but whatever. What happened to the ladies that you, she gave you? All the molds. All the molds that she gave you, were they the, uh, the they good were, ones like that? She gave me all of them. Uh, a couple of them had cracks, but yeah, they were all really good. And some were this big. Oh uh, I didn't want them. I didn't want 1960s slip molds. I was making my own oh. stuff. Uh, so I kept some of them. There were even some naughty ones of squirrels. <laughs> and I don't think I kept those either. I, I sold a lot of them at a garage sale, and then I donated some to uh, uh, to an art house. But uh, they just took up huge amounts of space in my studio. I, I guess so. That's why she but wanted they, to get rid of them. That can't be changed. I mean, you couldn't change any of the. Uh... No. 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 Well, I suppose I could have. I, this wasn't where my creativity yeah. lied, but I could have made wax copies of them and then sculpted with them some more or yeah. something. So plaster molds, nice and easy. This same concept, uh, you could do sand with stuff mixed in it for a one-shot mold. Uh, people who do um, uh, iron castings, have you ever heard of those? They'll like heat up a cauldron of iron and they will make something out of clay, squish it into some sand that's wet, and I, I don't know if they mix in other stuff or not, but probably mostly wet. Ooh, that wet sand will hold the shape, right? And they put it in there, and they take, carefully take out their, uh, their object that they've sculpted, and pour in the molten iron, that sand, it's only good for one, cools down, pops it out, and you've got a cast iron. Uh, I made rings sand cast in high iron. school. You did what? Made rings yeah, in high I school. Sand, I with sand, sand casting? With sand, sand, yeah. sand casting. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I have one that was made with sand yeah. casting. Now, you've still got your original. You could re-prepare the sand again and do it again, but that mold's only going to last for one shot with, with a sand casting. But again, anything that'll kind of hold the shape, hold some detail, and whatnot, so you want to take a look at these, pass them around, have some fun. All right. They, they, plaster does get heavy, which leads us to some other things. As we've seen, there's limitations with a solid mold, like a plaster mold. So you, you have, you got to make sure you don't have undercuts, and they're big and heavy, and they can break. So. Let's make a mold out of something more forgiving. And that led me to the discovery of latex. Latex mold making. Now this is a can of latex that I made some molds out of. And I sculpted just a little face, little like this. And I laid it down on a piece of plastic, maybe something like this. Squished it down really good onto the plastic so that the liquid mold making material wouldn't get under it. Here, let's hold that off to the side. And so this is what I had made out of modeling clay. Just had a modeling clay copy. And brush on a layer. According to the directions on the can, brush on a layer. You want to pass that around. Let it dry. Took hours. 
Go back, brush on another layer. Took hours to dry. Go back, brush on another layer. Uh, to get a decent one, and this is really thin, I think that's like eight to 10 layers. And you can kind of see how thin that is. And it took a couple of hours between each layer to, to make sure it dried. And that was on a warm summer day in my garage. Um, but it picks up beautiful amounts of detail. And as you can see, it's quite flexible. And it's very strong. So you can do a lot with that. But now that you've got something flexible, well now you've got a whole new set of problems if you try and cast it. Because now, if I may real quick, sure. if you try and cast into this, well it's flopping all around now. You pour in heavy plaster or something like that, it's not going to hold the original shape. And if you lay it down, well now it's, it's bumping up because of the table surface, so you've got to do something to make that latex now hold the shape you want, yet still be flexible. So now we have the mother mold. So you have your clay model, you put the latex over it, and before you remove that latex from your original model, once it's all dried and set, now you pour plaster over it for a mother mold. So this is strong, it doesn't need to be, it, it could be multiple parts. But now I've got something that will hold the shape that I want with the latex inside there. And I can pop the latex out and easily peel it off my casting. So we have a flexible mold, in this case latex, supported by a plaster mother mold. And this was a very, very simple mold, obviously just one part, and very shallow. That's a relief sculpture I intended to hang on the wall. And here are some castings off of it, if you wanted to kind of see those. Just a quick little, I had, basically I just had extra plaster from something else, and I said, why waste this plaster? I just slapped it in the mold real quick, and so I just got these little heads. What, what did you, do you have somebody's face or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, where is it? Somewhere around here. Uh, I sculpted a face. Oh, that's it. And it looked, the original clay looked something like that. Oh, that's nice. So, and it kind of fits in there nicely. Yeah. I just, then you just peel it off carefully, and voila. Now there are some serious undercuts on this thing. The nose holes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's an undercut. You start sticking things in there like silicone. And in the lips, I wanted her lips to be a little open. Well, there's undercuts in there. There's a few, there's slight undercut underneath her eyelids. They're there. But because I used a flexible mold, I can wiggle it off gently and on it comes. Now latex, uh, well, that was, that was a little tedious. All those layers and letting it dry. Well, then I discovered silicone. Now, silicone, oh, 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 hang on. We're still, let's talk latex a little bit more. My son went into scouts, so I said, oh, I know, I want to be part of this scouting adventure with him, too. Well, I'm a sculptor, how can I be part of the scouting adventure? So I decided to sculpt him something, and I took the scout emblem and I made it three-dimensional. Okay, so you've, I don't know if you've all seen the scout symbol, well, with the eagle on the fleur de lis. And this is a wall hanging, it's got a little place on the back. So this is the final product. And so this is just plaster. Uh, and then I finished it off with some oil paint uh, to try and give a bronze look. Does it look like bronze? If I didn't tell you it was plaster, you'd believe me it was bronze, right? Yeah. Sure. There's a lot of undercuts on this thing. Aren't they all over? I had to have a flexible mold. If I wanted to do it a molded plaster, it would have to be a part here, a part here, a part here, uh, a part here. There would be many parts to the mold, not just a simple two-part mold like that. That would be really, really difficult. So flexible. So I had done some of those latex molds. I thought, great. I'm going to make a latex mold 
of this, and so you can kind of see it there. There was my latex mold. Took me a really long time to make this, and I made it in two parts because this big undercut under the wings was probably just a little too much for the latex to handle flexibly, but these little ones under here would probably be okay. So I made a two-part mold. You can kind of see it there, and this, if I turn it the right way, it fits right up in here. Okay, so then I needed to make a mother mold around it because this is flopping all over the place. Then I learned some things about what to do about making a mother mold. Mm -hmm. I got really fancy. And I said, oh, I, I covered it with plaster and I put reinforcement in it with burlap to make the, the mold strong, the plaster mother mold strong around it. And then I put wood in there to reinforce it. And I had, so this fit on the outside somewhere out here. I don't remember this part goes. And there was two parts of that. You can see a remnant of it there somewhere. Obviously this thing fell apart. <coughs> it was, I thought it was going to be strong enough. It was not. And so, and this didn't do as well as I would have liked. So I learned a lot on that. It just kind of fell apart. I got one casting out of it and it looked okay. It was fine. Then I said, you know what? I made one for my, my son. I got his. But you know, my nephew just got his Eagle Scout. There's really good friends from Scouts. I, I like that boy a lot. He really worked hard for that Eagle Scout. I want to make one for him too. This thing isn't going to do it this mother mold broke. So I went back to my original sculpture. I hadn't destroyed it yet. I said, all right, let's make a new mold. So then I had already discovered the joys of silicone rubber. We'll get to this one in a minute. Silicone, where did I put my silicone? Slide by here. Oh, did I get those out? Oh, here they are on the floor. Silicone comes in many different colors and many different thicknesses, but is the stuff you use, is it two-part? Yeah, it's okay. two-part. Uh, I bought this online out of, uh, where was it, Tennessee? Yep, Chattanooga, Tennessee at a place called Townsend Atelier. Uh, there's two parts. You mix equal amounts, you measure out equal amounts, so actually I take old yogurt containers and pour out an equal amount of the white and an equal amount of the blue, and then pour it into an old butter container, something flexible plastic, and mix it up really good. And then uh, I can put that over the mold. So here's another face, actually this one, it's still here. So this little guy. So let's we'll come back to this one in a minute. So here is little baby's face I sculpted. And it's down really tight onto this piece of plastic so that the silicone won't ooze under it. Really tight. And I took some extra clay and I made a wall around it. And I squished that down to the plastic really good. Now, this isn't the same one. You can see it was just this big around. And so the silicone was over the baby's face around, and I had this wall of clay holding that silicone in shape. That takes like overnight to set. So that's why we're not doing it here today. I came back in and I ripped the clay off and this held its form. Now I took the clay, I added a little bit more to it, and I made a slightly bigger wall around it, or I should have done a better one. I didn't make it such good, so very good. And that went around there. And I made some undercuts on it, which I shouldn't have. There it goes, which way does this fit? There we go. And you can see I have to push it in because I made undercuts. That was a mistake. I learned. So then I had all of this sitting here on this board. 
with again the, a new wall around it. Once the plaster set, take that off. <laughs> 